In this final part of my NARDL series, I'm going to show how to obtain and interpret the dynamic multiplier graph and also uh, present some uh, diagnostics. And as a quick reminder, the uh, dynamic multipliers um, that I discussed at the outset of this presentation, they're going to show the pattern of adjustments of the dependent variable to its new long run equilibrium after a, a shock has occurred, a positive or a negative shock in this case has occurred in the uh, regressor. Right now the multiplier effects of the positive and the negative shocks um, on uh, the dependent variable um, are going to be evaluated in the form shown here which I also discussed a, a, a tiny bit at the outset of this presentation and essentially what this is telling us is it's an observation of how the dependent variable traverses uh, along the horizon on account of in this case a positive shock to the dependent variable the uh, regressor and uh, a negative shock to the regressor so to execute this, this is a, a summary of the command, we're going to go to our NARDL output. So let's do that real quick right here on eViews. Now uh, right here what's current is the bounce, the asymmetric bounce test result. If I scroll down you can see that's our F and all that good stuff. And in the middle this is our asymmetric long run levels uh, output right here. And then uh, importantly this is our um, nonlinear, uh, if you like, asymmetric error correction. Uh, result. But I, I do want to go to the uh, nonlinear ARDL output. So if I click estimate and then I click back up here, OK, to see the uh, asymmetric um, um, ARDL output. It is asymmetric because remember we do have the positive and the negative shocks right down here. Anyhow, while we're here, I'm going to go to add ins and then click NARDL multiplier graphs. Click it, give it a quick second, and it's, it pops out for GDP and for ADR, the two regressors in this study. So I'm just going to interpret based on the GDP right here. All right. Um, so now, uh, looking at the uh, multiplier graph here, there's probably five key pieces of information to get out of it. The first is, and as shown in the legend right down here, the continuous black line right here shows how Y adjusts over the horizon due to a positive shock in X. And um, the dashed black line right here uh, shows the adjustments of the dependent variable Y over the horizon due to a negative shock in X. The second thing is the small dashed uh, red line right here in the middle um, is the asymmetric plot and it reflects the difference between the dynamic multipliers of positive and negative uh, changes in um, the regressor. Now thirdly, the asymmetry line again that you see right here um, lies within the upper and the lower uh, bands of the 95% uh, confidence interval. So that's the halo that you see around it right there. So that if the zero line falls within the boundary, if this zero line right here falls within this boundary, then what, what does that tell us? There is no asymmetry. Right? because uh, it would not be statistically significant. Fourthly, we can easily respond to the question, so how does Y respond? How does the dependent variable respond to positive and negative shocks in the regressor? Now clearly, to answer this, we can see that Y responds positively to a positive shock and negatively to a negative shock. Also, we can see that the response of Y to either positive or negative shock is more pronounced further afield, all right, in the long run than in the short run, where it's virtually um, at the same operating at the same level. So finally, we can also see that in the long run out here, the magnitude of increase due to a positive shock is larger than the magnitude of decrease due to a negative shock. So if I actually place my cursor here long enough, you see um, it's about negative 9 right there, and over here it's going to be about close to 11. See that? It's 11 right there. So that difference is suggestive of the observed asymmetry that we already determined in our wall tests. 
and because of this the asymmetry line with its confidence interval moves away quite so distinctly from the zero line in the latter stages as you can see right here this is the zero line right here and you can see how this moves up above it also it shifts like I said um, up above the zero line indicating that in the long run positive shocks way more right they appear to have a stronger impact on the dependent variable which in this study is actually hotel occupancy rate uh, than negative shocks so that's about it um, now we can uh, we can uh, also um, to wrap this up um, get a sense as to the stability of the model by um, going here let's uh, move this away and click back here we got to make this current and then we want to go to add-ins again and then click on NARDL custom and custom um, graphs custom is uh, cumulative sum and custom uh, Q is cumul cumulative uh, 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 sum squares right so we click on it and you see them right here and uh, this is the the uh, uh, custom graph and this is a uh, custom squares um, and uh, to the extent that the blue line lies within the 5% boundary, either way, uh, we're quite fine with it. Also, you could um, um, go back out here, click on View, do a, a couple of uh, residual tests, you know, go to Residual Diagnostics, perhaps click on Heteroscedasticity and OK. And you can see here that um, regardless of which statistic you look at, the F statistic right here, uh, the p-value to it is uh, well above 5%. So that tells us that we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. And if you want to, you can also look at uh, tests of uh, normality, residual diagnostics. Go here to histogram normality test, and you can see that the p-value for the Jackie Bear statistic um, is well above uh, 5%, telling us that the data um, but more than likely proceed from normal distribution. So that these are a couple, a couple of the uh, final things that you can do to uh, strengthen and embellish your your test, your your study. And I hope you enjoy this. I'm Pat Obi. Let's keep learning.